All right, guys. Uh, welcome to episode two of Raw Dogs. <laughs> Yesterday, I recorded episode one with Andre, and we talked about screaming and how he went from it being a shy introvert to screaming monster. Really, really good. Today, we have Charles. Um, and Charles has, I mean, I've known Charles for many years. He was one of the first people who actually helped us with, you know, dog tea and all this stuff. And now he's one of the Afro D Academy members and really good dude. I'm inspired by you, bro. Just watching your story on YouTube, your story video uh, really inspired me. Today, I started reading Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. And I, you know what, before today, I wasn't ready to read it. I wasn't ready. You know, like Neo is not ready to know certain things. I wasn't ready until today. And I read about 35% on my Kindle, learned a ton, so happy. And I did it because of you. You mentioned it in your video. So yeah, man, warm welcome from our, our YouTube channel. Um, for those of you who don't know Charles yet, uh, Coach Charles, he's a big, big fitness freak. He's been into health and fitness since he was a baby, essentially. If you watch his, watch his videos, he looks like a baby, even though he might not be. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, he's been on a journey. He's been through a lot of hardship. He coaches people now. He has his own YouTube channel. You know, I'll put all the description in the description so they can reach you. But when I saw your story about how you were anorexic, and you had this body image issues, you know, your, your two feet are like very different sizes. You know, this is a big thing. Like no one really knows about you. I mean, I didn't know until I saw that video and you go through life where you're judged on your sporting ability, you know, in the culture you brought up in, it's not in every culture, but in your culture, it's like that. And so being judged on athletic ability and having this big deficiency makes you very insecure. So you, you know, you started, tell us about that a little bit so we can catch up with what you felt at that time. Yeah, thank you so much, by the way, for, the, for this badass introduction. And uh, you never read Victor Frankl, you said, never before? I didn't. Oh, damn. Okay. I know. I know. Interesting, no worries, no worries. I mean, you're doing good, so no <laughs> <laughs> I, I already, I, 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 before Viktor Frankl stuff, I read the Gulag stuff and the Golodomor, mm -hmm. which is the famine that they did in, uh, you know, so I read a lot of really dark stuff, but yep. Frankl today. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I also have Alexander Zolchnitsyn in my bookshelf somewhere, Gulag Archipelago, yeah. So, um, yeah, as you said, I even sometimes forget myself that I have uh, this issue with my feet. Um, one of my uh, feet was blocked in the womb of, womb of my mother, so we never really developed properly. So as you said, one foot has size 37, uh, 35, like in Europe. I don't know how much it is in, in the US, but like seven sizes difference, which is pretty big. Like my left foot, I would need a, a shoe from the child section on my left foot. And uh, the feet of my girlfriend are also bigger than my left foot. You know, and she's like, what, five feet, five feet four or something, five feet three. So yeah, big, pretty big difference. But to be totally honest, um, I, still, I still forget it. You know, it's not something that bothers me a lot right now, but still it put me on that journey of self-improvement, personal development. And to be totally honest with you, I had this one time in my life where I just wished to be someone else, which is uh, a pretty big issue, I would say. I don't know a lot of people that wish to be someone else. And I don't want to like create like the uh, victim mindset around that. I'm just like uh, telling you the facts, what I experienced back in the days. Uh, but still, I'm pretty happy that it uh, was that way because then it led me on the path of personal development of reading all these books. I have like 300 books in my room right now. I'm not saying you need to read 300 books, but uh, I, I um, found Ty Lopez in 2014 when his 67 steps were like $5. So I started them, them there, uh, there back then. So then I just went on this crazy reading rant and it led me to the point where I am right now, you know, finding my purpose, finding my way in life. And with the, my story video, at first I didn't even want to record it, but I was like, yeah, maybe it could help one or two people, you know. And now it actually became a very, very um, successful video for my, for my terms. So yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it. I always forget that video. To be honest. Yeah, it's my favorite video of yours by far, by far. Because dude, like being straight with the past is hard. And look, man, same thing for me. I mean, 
a ton of people ask me about my story, my story. And, and, you know, before I, I went, I go through phases, right? I'm like, ah, I don't want to talk about myself. Ah. Mm-hmm. And then I go through phases like, all right, bring it on. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm confident. It's okay. I'm past it. I'm happy with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I'm aware of it. You know, I accept it. It's okay. Take a deep breath. Um, here's the meat of the video that I want to ask you. Okay. Mm-hmm. What gives you meaning? Oh, that's a good one. dude. In my overall life, you would say? Right now, mm-hmm. in your life, day to day, you wake up, you do your activities, you have your whatever you do in life. Um, what gives you meaning? It's a, it's a good question because uh, in 2017, I had some time where I was like kind of depressed, I would say. And then uh, one, of Joe, one of Joe Rogan videos popped onto my YouTube feed and he was talking about li- your life should be like a movie, you know. In the beginning, the main actor has no money, no girlfriend, is not really confident, you know, but then he starts his journey and then shit, is, shit happens, you know. And on the spot, I remember it was February 2017, I decided that my life is a movie and just by flipping that paradigm, I started to risk more. So funny enough, in February 2017, I invested some cash in Bitcoin because I started to have this mindset. I was like, what can happen? It's like a movie. I just, I had $2,000 on my bank account. I bought one for $1,000. And just, that, this was the start. But then later I talked about my, our common friend, Frank. I've met Frank Yang at a conference uh, in New York because I went to New York. I was like, let's just see what happens. And I just connected with him and I was like, oh, this is part of the movie, part of the movie. And now I'm just in this complete flow of asking myself, okay, what can I do next? What can, can I do next? So perhaps this perspective shift of creating a worthwhile story at the end of my life, which perhaps already created in some kind of way, gives me the most meaning, I would say. So then also when I suffer, when I experience suffering, like Victor Frankl talks about in his book, it's part of the movie. I'm like, okay, man, let's get it on. You know, like you said before, let's just get it on. Let's make a new chapter, create a new chapter. And it's all part of the, of the movie, you know, it's, and this gives me a lot of meaning and helps me also just like to go through everything that happens. Hmm. I see. So giving your life this movie aspect and, and yeah. living every day like it's a different scene of a movie, that's your meaning. Building oh. the movie. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, do you, so what are, your, what are your feelings about choice, man? Like choice, free will, what do you oh, believe? Dude. What do you believe in? Because you 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 you've been talking to Frank now, so like, <laughs> I'm sure like I'm sure you guys talked about this Matrix stuff. Um, yeah. But your your personal beliefs would love for That's to a good hear. One. I love the book uh, by Matthew Side. It's called Bounce, and he says everyone every successful athlete has always two mindsets in his head that contradict each other, but help him to cope with reality. I have kind of the same. I. I believe in the universe, that the universe gives you what you need, not what you want. But still, I don't, it's difficult to say, but I, I agree with Sam Harris, kind of. He says you don't really have free will and everything is determ- determined in the future. But then having just this mindset would, would not help me to cope with reality because I'd be, I would be like helpless. Like, oh yeah, just let my hands from the real know, just let the car go where it goes. And then you're just like victim of your circumstances. So I have both mindsets in my head. Like I'm, I take 100% responsibility for my life to 100% for everything, for my thoughts, for the food I'm eating, everything. But then at the same time, I'm still like, okay, if, if, sh- if shit hits the fan, I'm like, okay, at the end of the day, my life will be great a- anyway. You know, don't stress too much about it. But I try to have both mindsets uh, at the same time. Yeah, that's kind of my... Got it. So <clears throat> this is what... Remi- when you said in your video that when you're in hardship, you think of Frank Victor Frankl and what he went through at Auschwitz and, and all the, the hardships and obstacles that he overcame. It, it reminded me of this book, The Winner Effect. When, uh, when you know, the, the, uh, Ian Robertson, the PhD neuroscientist, you wrote it. It's and, over here, dude. I, yeah, I'm sure you have it. Have it. I, I, it's one of the few books I've read twice, <laughs> by the way. I, I oh, read here. oh, you have it. <laughs> of course, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This guy. Ooh, the winner. Yeah, yeah. Baby. I love it, dude. Yeah. And, and the reason it reminded me of that is in the book, he says, sometimes we experience something in life and we use it as an anchor 
for future experiences, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, one of the things he mentions is winning the Oscar for a Hollywood person, right? It's like that motherfucker wins the Oscar, right? And he's like on top of the world. He's achieved this thing. Four years down the line, five years down the line, 20 years down the line, let's say he's fucking broke, addicted to meth, you know, be under some bridge, you know, fucking injecting in his, he'll be like, ah, I won the Oscar. Mm. You know, he has this anchor that gives him that strength. You know, it, it's, it's a very material thing. Obviously, okay, an Oscar, big deal. But the Oscar represents something in his mind that gives him this strength inside, yeah. you know? And usually it happens in childhood, very mm -hmm. early. Like it, it, it's like, you know, cause that person who won the Oscar, maybe as a child, he was like acting and doing scenes in front of the mirror and all this. So the Oscar represents all that, right? The inner child, the, the playfulness of acting. Is there something that you have or you have experienced? Mm. To be totally honest, dude, something pops into my mind. I was not like a young child, but I'm totally honest with you. Uh, my mother, I'm just saying that like openly on the internet because I know she doesn't mind. But my mother, she lost her dad. Like her dad killed himself when she was 16 years old. And she was his favorite uh, daughter. And I guess this is still like in the subconscious of my family. So when, when I was like 16, 17, 18, my mom like had like, these alcohol episodes where she just told me and my dad that we, it's that's our fault that she's going to kill herself like i heard that five to ten times perhaps already in my life now she's fine you know but then it really hit me hard and um since then i'm like shit i cannot really help my mom right now because she's she's not fucked up right now back in the days so i was like shit i cannot help her so let me at least at least help everyone else so perhaps that's the reason why i'm always like hey you know do what you need to do to come out of your suffering. It's, it's, never, it's never too late. You know? that's, that's, that's perhaps the reason I want to be like a little bit of, like of this motivational speaker on YouTube and I always try to be super positive. You know? This could be one. Perhaps when I was like a little kid, like three to four to five years old, perhaps I felt it still, you know, like this vibe for my mom. And my mom does everything she w wants. You know? I mean, she did everything that, for me. I'm super grateful. But perhaps this could be like some underlying subconscious thing going on in my family. So I'm just like, okay, let's just be healthy and, you know, get your, get your shit together. Wow. Okay, man, that's a, that's an amazing one that your yeah. mom, cause, yeah. cause you know, I, I, I've been reading um, and listening to Todd Herman. He wrote the alter ego effect. Mm -hmm. And in that he talks about how we have an emotional connection with someone and we can be that person when adversity hits. So for example, you could embody Victor Frankl at a time when something is really hard. You can literally flip a switch, right? Like Todd Herman, he, he talked about it with Brian Rose in London Real. He's like, I would wear a Darth Vader helmet that I bought for $500 from, from the internet. And I would talk in the Darth Vader voice while I was writing because I was so uncomfortable with writing. But Darth Vader can do it. Oh, damn. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. It's very, it's very mind-blowing because he yeah. said that the top athletes in the world, the top mm -hmm. business performance, those top people, they all have alter egos, mm -hmm. right? Like Kobe Bryant is the black mamba, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. For example, and other sports athletes are like that. He has four alter egos in his life. Mm. And, and he, he physically does something, right? So he'll like do something to his ear, like, like he'll like flip something in his skin, like, like a switch and he'll become that person. Mm. So perhaps you're not doing it consciously, but subconsciously, perhaps you like flip the switch, like, okay, I can like do be this person, like Victor Frankl, mm. for example. That's a good one. Um, yeah. That's a good one. I have one thing that uh, once I got hypnotized and the guy anchored me to be in a really resourceful, resourceful state. And since then, I can trigger myself to go into that state again by one, one little move. Yeah, really? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, one, yeah, exactly. So I can do it consciously. If I'm really in a bad negative spiral, I just like tap my shoulder twice, like really hard, and I flip in that, in, into that state. Yeah. 
holy fuck <laughs> yeah, it's like state control yeah because i need to work on that sometimes i'm, get, I'm getting really emotional and nervous so i like i like to like uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, Tony does that, you'll notice Tony Robbins before he goes on stage, he does something to his shoulder. It's some yes. kind of priming, similar. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Man. It's hard to do it from zero to one hundred because you need to prime yourself. But I had the opportunity to get to get primed once. Wow. And since then, I I do it. Yeah, it's not super hard, like super like, but it still changes your your state and your thoughts and your actions. Yeah. Love it, dude. I I I really am looking into these things now. I I feel I'm ready for this now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I really feel it. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the final thing I want to ask you before we end is this. How do you see the next phase of your movie? Like, what do you, mm-hmm. what do you feel? 2020, what's that movie scene? What's happening? You're the director. Really? What's happening? That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> to be honest, I'm a little bit scared of the next couple of chapters. Because either, I guess, I don't want to sound harsh, either going to be super good, like super easy going, and I'm going to be super successful, or I'm going to get really challenged. But then I will be good at the end of the day. But I'm really like, perhaps not scared, but ex- excited. Yeah. But then again, well, what's the, what's the better what's the better part of the movie? I, right now, we'll, just for the listeners, I will move to, to Berlin, um, start a new job, and work on my business. So what's the better story? Like I stay in Switzerland where everything is safe, and I live a safe life. Or I just go there and I see what happens, you know. Perhaps, perhaps I fail, but what does failure mean, you know? It's like a bro, bro, get, get the fuck out of Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's too predictable. Dude, you know what it is? Like, okay, so when I was talking to my ex's dad in Stockholm, you know, he, he was a very like, kind of a negative dude, right? And he told me, Farhan, the only people in the world that are worse than the Swedes are the Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I know. What- no way. You, you yeah, yeah. cannot be worse than the Swedes. The Swedes exactly. look like the yeah, worst. Yeah, yeah. I was also in Sweden like two months ago. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. You get it, right? Yeah, yeah. Fuck, yeah. bro. Because you said, I, said, I saw a video of you once like two years ago in Montreal. And you said your city is also like affecting you because of this unconscious mindset. It's exactly. the same with Switzerland. It's too secure. People want everything to be predictable. And yeah, it's just like. Okay. Bro, I went into the lost and found. Okay. Because I, I lost my Apple pen, you know, the little pen, Apple pencil, I lost it. So I go into the lost and found and there's nobody there. It's just me. So I go straight and it's an Indian Pakistani looking dude. And I'm like, Hey man, I lost. He's like, you need a ticket. <laughs> like what? A ticket for the lost and found. He's like, yeah, get a ticket. <laughs> So I go and I pull out. The, I'm like, oh my god, I'm in, I'm in Sweden. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. IKEA. <laughs> exactly. They made yeah. IKEA, but they made IKEA. They made H and M. They made Shopify, and they made Ericsson. Not bad. No, yeah, that's it's too good. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. They did something good. Still, of course. But I get, I get your point, dude. I was there like holding a presentation in front of, uh, with the CEO in front of the company and it was just like, like church. Everyone is silent, you know. They don't really laugh at jokes, you know what I mean? It's like... It's, like it's a very scared say. culture, bro. Very scared culture. Yeah, you, right. You've been to Manhattan. You, you mentioned it, right? In one of your videos. Yeah. You, you saw Brandon there and Frank and everyone. Okay. Yeah. What do you feel about Manhattan? Mm, people are really direct. Like everyone is like on his, on his purpose, like masculine. David Data talks about New York, like this masculine energy. Everyone is on, on his purpose, you know, like, bah, 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 bah. I wouldn't want to live there. It was cool to see, but uh, yeah, like people are in your face. You know, it's kind of good also. They're not like fake. They just tell you what, what's up. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, brother. Thanks so much for uh, granting us with this amazing, amazing, uh, your experiences, man, your love all from the heart. So thanks so much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, dude, I, I'm very much looking forward to watching the movie as it unfolds. I'm in the front row. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Also yours, dude. Yours is also inspiring. Thanks a lot, man. Awesome. All right, dude. I'll see you soon.